Welcome everybody to the uh, first session. Um, AR for Urban and Architecture, it looks like uh, up first is uh, Justin Porter and Philip Lorenzo, uh, BNB Builders and uh, BIM Anywhere. So or actually Peter Wu, yeah, there we go. We've been in anywhere, so go ahead and take it away, guys. So, uh, I work with BN Builders. We're a general contractor in the Bay Area, and I've been working with uh, BIM Anywhere for the last couple of years. This is Peter. Hi, again, my name is Peter. So just real quick, BN Builders, general contractor on the West Coast, headquarters in Seattle. Um, we have an office here locally in Redwood City. Um, we like to think of ourselves as a pretty innovative builder, um, so we're always looking at new technologies, how they can help us improve our workflows, um, and that's how we found BIM Anywhere. Um, and I'll let Peter kind of talk about what BIM Anywhere does. Okay, uh, just a brief uh, bio about BIM Anywhere. We're a Bay Area startup founded by Berkeley engineers in construction and computer science. Uh, we're focused on providing mobile and cloud solutions for construction and facilities management. Uh, and some of the innovative uh, um, solutions that we have are, have been featured in uh, Future Tech, uh, ENR Future Tech report, uh, and as well as recognized by industry leaders such as Fiat Tech uh, and Construct Tech. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about building information modeling. Um, if you are in the AEC industry or are familiar with it, you probably know that building information modeling is transforming the way buildings are designed, coordinated. Um, it's a very collaborative effort to bring, you know, we bring all these models together during design and coordination. Um, we're, it allows us to design things we've never designed, been able to design before, as well as um, get them coordinated and take them out to the field. Um, the, like I said, this is great during design and construction. Um, it's a very collaborative effort. Everybody's, you know, bringing together their models, um, especially in pre-construction. We'll get all our subcontractors involved. Bring, bringing those models together with the designers, um, you know, we, whether it's in person or digitally, you know, talking over the web, it's a uh, very collaborative effort. So once that's done, once our kind of we've coordinated all of our different models together, we then to take that information out to the field, we will one put put the model in the trailer. So this allows you know people to you know when they're out in the field, they can go back to the trailer, check out the model. Um, the other thing we do is we generate drawings. So you know, this is how you get your permit. This is how most everybody in the construction industry is used to building. They look at drawings. So throughout the construction process, you know, everything's always changing on a construction site. You're redlining these drawings. You're marking them up throughout, you know, the job. If you've ever seen a set of construction plans that a foreman has had their hands on, it's a disaster, right? And every foreman for each subcontractor has their red lines, their notes, and they don't know what the other subcontractor is doing. So, for example, let's, let's say, you know, there's a mechanical subcontractor who has a duct that they're out in the field, they, you know, they realize that, oh, you know, I need to shift this duct down two inches. Well, in the past, they would have shifted it down two inches. Maybe they would have went and talked to one of the other subs. Maybe not. If they're the first ones in there, we're, we're going to take this space. So they would move it down, and that was that. They'd mark it on their drawings. The plumbing sub, subcontractor, may not, have, you know, they don't know this information. They get out in the field, you know, they're like, you took my space. So it, it becomes a, uh, a major issue. So in a perfect world, what would happen is all these, you know, red lines that are happening out in the field would come back to the office. They'd update the model. You know, we'd get the model back out in the trailer. Um, if you guys are familiar with communication between design and construction, we, that does not happen at all. So kind of there's, there is a line between design and construction quite often. Um, the communication just doesn't happen even within one company. Their design build, a lot of times the designers and the contractors, there's a big disconnect. So what we found is we want to take the model out into the field. So what we uh, paired up with BIM Anywhere a couple years ago to uh, work with them to get the model and the field on the iPad. Um, with this, now the model is going to, since people are using it out in the field, it now gets updated because people are using it. It becomes relevant because before what would happen is all these changes would happen in the field. They're not updated in the model. The model's out of date. It's pointless. So when, now that we have this model out in the field, we can, um, you know, we can snap dimensions. We can do, get all the information we would get from the model and back in the trailer in the field 
So we're not now spending our time going back to the trailer to get that information, which is probably out of date. We're opening up our iPad and getting to it. So the big thing about getting the model on the iPad, one, it's very intuitive. Um, a lot of contractors, you know, you, you've got uh, foremen out in the field that are um, not very tech savvy. You give them an iPad. You know, we've been viewing drawings on iPads for a couple years now. You give them an iPad. It's very intuitive. They're willing. They're, it's easy for them to get into the model. Um, relevant information stays up to date. It's collaborative. It allows the design and the con construction teams to work together. And you no longer need a $3,000 crazy BIM machine to access the model. So it's pretty economical. So I'm going to do a really quick live demo. I know we don't have a whole lot of time here. So I'm going to jump in. So uh, one of the beautiful things about this is when you get into your, uh, your model, the first thing you do is you, uh, you click on a plan. So to get to where you want to go on the floor plan or on the floor, you just open the floor plan. This has been a huge um, kind of game changer in terms of getting people who aren't used to getting into models into a model. Because before, they'd have to kind of walk around, find where they are in the building. This is way easier to get to where you need to be. So I'm going to do a quick little example here. So, so we, let's, let's just look at this here. So in the past, you know, the, this is like a fire sprinkle and a, ra a light, right? In the past, they, oh, you know, the, the fire sprinkler would maybe shift up here. And now they know right here that they can shift up. There's open space there. But in the past, there could have been, a, you know, there could have been a duct there, and they wouldn't know. But now they have all the information of the layers of all these utilities out in the field. They can access this information easily. They can shift in the field, document that. They can actually then create a issue on the, on the uh, iPad, or they can document what they've done. That gets back to the office, and the model gets updated. So some other great features. Um, kind of the reason we're here today is this great AR mode that they're, they're working on adding more and more features to this. But I can get into the room where I'm at. And I can look up, and it, and it uses the interior gyroscope within the. So it's, it's so much easier to get all of this relevant information than ever before with, with the uh, AR mode. Real quick, uh, show you how easy it is to snap a dimension. You just click on the object you want to measure, and I want to get the uh, elevation to the floor. Let's do it again here. Oh. I don't like that one. You just click the two objects. You get your, uh, your x, y, z coordinates. Very quick to snap dimensions between objects. OK, I'm going to jump back into our uh, presentation here. I'll, I can get back into the sort of management table. OK. So I'm going to let Peter talk a little bit about kind of where, where they're headed. This, I've kind of shown you where we're at now. So what, what's, uh, what's coming up, uh, interior positioning technology is uh, very exciting for a lot of industry, and especially for us because we're a location-based platform. With accurate, uh, indoor, with accurate indoor positioning, uh, we can really provide a true augmented reality experience uh, to improve construction and facilities. Uh, some examples of how we can do that is overlaying um, or merging uh, information from the digital world to reality or vice versa. And here you see some examples of, of that happening. So in the future, imagine going into a room and be able to see a 3D representation of an area simply by pointing your smartphone, your tablet uh, at an area or you know, in, in the near future, perhaps with a Google-like glass, you can look at an area and see the 3D representation. Um, so that's some of the, the, the developments that we're, we're, we're working on. And with, as the t indoor positioning uh, technology matures, we'll be able to get there very soon. Thank you. So I didn't know if we would have time. I think we've got a minute here. So I'm going to jump back in and uh, show you. The other uh, kind of beautiful thing about this is all this, we generate all this really valuable data during design and construction. We can now link this information back to objects in the model. So then we can hand this over to the owner at the end of the project and they can access, let's say, I can double click on this piece of equipment here. Maybe. Yeah. Let's turn that off. Oh, you're in the measure mode. Yeah. 
And then I can hyperlink to either to locally uh, anything on the iPad as well as any cloud-based system. So if the owner has a, a you know, way that they keep all their information, I can uh, link all this relevant you know, construction, cut sheets, data sheets, anything back to um, their database or a local database on the iPad. Relevant information, when they need it in the field, they don't, they're not getting binders and, and boxes full of paper information like they did in the past. Yeah, question. So the first sub that dropped everything two inches, you said you moved everything out to the trailer in a sense. Who's making that update for everybody? So in the past, the, so as a general contractor, we had the subcontractors update their models if they were you know, making changes out in the field. Um, it was a very difficult thing to track. Um, one, because they weren't using a lot of this information out in the field. They would come down to the trailer and say, you know, who's, on, you know, who's going over who, right? And that was it. They didn't actually measure and snap dimensions. Where now they can actually get precisely where they're supposed to be. You know, we all know. Who makes the change in the trailer then, in a sense? That it would be, the change would be made back at the office, and it would get synced back to a kind of central model. Okay. Yeah. And that's still the case, even with BIM Anywhere, is we still have our subcontractors, their detailers back in the office are making updates. And then we have that, you know, they post it to a cloud and we update the model on the iPad. Are you requiring subcontractors? You probably have to tell them you have to use it or you're not going to be a subcontractor. Yeah, so we set it up. I mean, we do the legwork of getting the model on the iPad and then we have our subcontractors, you know, access our information and use that. Yes. Cool, and then it looks like we have uh, time for a couple more questions while James gets set up on Peter's uh, podium there. So. Um, the indoor positioning uh, systems are actually not accurate enough yet to, to be used during a uh, construction. The examples that we show are we're all manually aligned. We have a QR code to get it close enough to that location and at that point we still have to manually align. What we require is probably a uh, three feet accuracy for indoor positioning systems. So we looked at a lot of exist current technologies out there, iBeacons, RFIDs, Wi-Fi triangulation, and, and in combination of, you know, they're used together. Uh, but it's still not quite there yet. And uh, we're talking to several hardware manufacturers, and they'll, they're will they making some uh, um, rather quick developments pretty soon. And I think we'll be able to, you know, leverage that technology very quickly. Uh, they're export out of Navis work right now. Um, yeah. Correct. No. DWF. DWF. Do do you support IFCs to go along with that? Uh, we will. In we have a prototype that's working um, already working with IFC models. Uh, we will probably roll that out later this year. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys.